So this is what uh, also um, um, points to the fact that it's necessary to identify additional modifiers um, or additional genes or mechanisms that contribute to uh, making the symptoms appear. And um, just going away from this, what we know from the fact that FSHD affects subsets of muscles, uh, a very specific sets, uh, set of muscles depicted on, on, on these schemes, um, means that, well, it, it refers to the, the observation that all muscles in the body do not have the same developmental history. We know that uh, facial muscles are controlled by a different set of mechanisms compared to trunk uh, muscles or even like uh, every, uh, um, well, we can distinguish a number of uh, subtypes and these finer correlate during the embryonic life. So it is logical that whatever the genetic causes uh, of FSHD, it's logical to think that maybe they could alter uh, one uh, a mechanism that is specific to a subgroup of muscles. And maybe this mechanism has to occur during embry embry embryonic life, sorry, but um, it may also uh, be extended um, in the adulthood. So this is where my lab comes uh, into the picture. So uh, the institute where I work is basically an institute of developmental biology. So we try to study uh, mechanisms by which uh, bodies are created, the structures of the body and so on. So this involves uh, a lot of studies on, on different uh, animal models, including Drosophila, um, uh, chicken embryos, uh, Xenopus, and so on, but also mouse. And uh, the model that my lab has chosen to work with is, is the mouse. And we typically uh, study um, what happens to embryos. Uh, this is like an, a mouse embryo at around mid gestation. Um, and for a long time, we were focusing on uh, the nervous system, but then we uh, progressively switched to uh, the understanding on, of the mechanisms by, that control, uh, like the assembly of the, the complex structure, uh, muscle structure, but also connection to this would be the spinal cord. And in the spinal cord, you have these uh, neurons or motor neurons that are those that will directly connect the muscles. And uh, what you see on this scheme is that very early during development, you have to establish a precise map with this muscle being connected by one group of neurons, which is distinct uh, from the group of neurons that will innervate another muscle. And so we are basically studying the mechanisms that uh, contribute to making these maps and the genes that are involved. And we typically try to um, disrupt these genes in mice to engineer mouse models that are genetically modified and to study the consequences so that we can define, uh, okay, how important this gene is for that process. And if you remove it, what happens and, and how does this uh, contribute to neuromuscular diseases? And although I'm not going to tell you the story of why we picked fat, we at some point had selected to work on a gene called FAT1 that codes for um, a very large protein that's uh, present on the surface of, uh, of the cells. And um, this, the reason why we had started to work with it was because it was expressed uh, during embryonic life in either neurons or muscles. Um, but we were, uh, so when we started studying these mice, uh, so we started to actually look at the consequences of this mutation on the formation of muscles and, and we uh, were able to benefit from uh, spectacular ways to visualize muscles in an embryo. So here uh, you have this blue staining in uh, basically every nuclei of every muscle and overall, if you stain the entire embryo, so that's a little bit further 
uh, than uh, mid-gestation, you can recognize basically the same muscles as that uh, you would recognize on yourself. And uh, by looking at uh, the consequences of uh, disrupting the FAT1 gene, we found that overall muscle uh, development is occurring, but there, were, uh, there was a specific group of muscles that uh, seemed uh, not to be uh, patterned correctly to have uh, problems of shapes and density. And that included uh, this large muscle, which is uh, here, which is a mouse-specific muscle, which uh, has been lost in uh, evolution and is not present in human. But that also included like alterations of shapes, additional muscles here, um, like muscles in, in here in the shoulder area, but also uh, subcutaneous muscles in the face that had some weird shapes or reduced. And then if you look with higher magnification, we also saw that um, uh, inside these muscles, not only there's um, reduced density of muscle fibers, but we can also see abnormal uh, orientation of the muscle fibers. So this, this means that basically the muscles are misshaped with uh, misoriented muscle fibers and also like some weird connections uh, to them in the, in the body. And you may imagine that this Although it is a muscle, the muscle genes are present, this might um, kind of constitute a misconception of the muscle that m will make it, make it work a little bit uh, less well than a normal muscle, less efficiently. And the first thing was that there was a very striking similarity between the map of muscles affected during development in these animals and the map of muscles affected in FSHD. Uh, but not only this, if we look at uh, how the mice do after birth, um, these mice, although they also have some uh, defects unrelated to FSHD, they um, had some uh, muscle wasting very specifically in the muscles that were affected during development. As if this uh, early abnormality uh, present during development is sufficient to predispose these muscles to an early onset muscle wasting. Not only this, but as you know, there are a number of non-muscular uh, symptoms uh, associated with FSHD, such as uh, retinal vasculopathy, so abnormal uh, well, problems with uh, vasculature in the eye, and, and through these uh, stainings, fluorescent stainings where we can visualize blood vessels in the retina, we were able to detect some abnormalities of, of variable severities, and of course here I'm, I'm showing a very drastic example, uh, but that really reminded of the abnormalities uh, found in this um, codes-like uh, symptom. And also you uh, probably know that there's an association with uh, hearing loss, and although we didn't demonstrate that our mice uh, have hearing loss problems, but uh, we found that they have some structural abnormalities in the, in the, um, the inner ear, and another lab has also shown that there were uh, minor um, problems in the making of the cochlea th that are uh, obviously associated to um, deafness. So both muscle phenotypes and non-muscle phenotypes uh, resemble strikingly FSHD symptoms. So that was very exciting. But I have to, uh, to say that in, in here, wh what we've studied is uh, our mice in which the gene is disrupted in every cell of the body. And I said, okay, we have some uh, muscle and uh, non-muscular symptoms that resemble FSHD, but uh, this mouse model is actually uh, lethal in 90% of the cases. And even in the cases that don't die, they may end up with problems that are unrelated to FSHD, like problems in the kidney. Uh, 